this is Bobcast. Buffalo Brotherhood.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Buffalo Brotherhood. This is the Bobcast, episode 80. I'm Ryan, and alongside me is Mike. And across the table is Doug. And a uh, returning guest, lodge member, uh, Jake. Hey. Jake's here. Hey, Jake. Technologist Jake. extraordinary. I, I, I should have thrown it to you just to say your name, like I did the oh, other yeah. people, but then I, I, I chickened out there at the last minute that you wouldn't. That you wouldn't know what I was meaning, and then uh, like, you wouldn't know your own name. No, <laughs> it, it fades me a couple times. Uh, hey, uh, uh, this is a oh crap! What is that? <laughs> what is my name? What? Uh, it's a good, it's a good day, it's a good day. It's chilly. It's chilly out. Welcome to fall, ladies and gentlemen. I don't yes. know if I told you, but I'm loving it. It's officially fall. Da, my da, favorite da, 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 da. <laughs> I beat you to it. <laughs> Because he said I'm loving it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, my favorite time of the year as well. I mean, I love it. I, school's I love back it. in. Sweater weather. Ah, oh, it's my favorite sweater weather. I like sweater weather, but I don't like to actually wear sweaters because I'm just naturally, well, I'm naturally carrying around like 300 pounds worth of sweater. Do you do you hear something? Yeah. What do we hear? I hear a. Bzz. Ah, there we go. Someone decided to set their phone on top oh. of some cables there. Oh man, that'll cause a buzz. Mm. That was me. It was my fault. They I won't hear it, it, probably. Um, who knew that like electrical devices have a little bit of an aura around everything that the they EMP touch? Field. Do you not remember, right when cell phones got big, it, you didn't go to a lot of concerts then, but when you would go to a concert, like the speakers before like a band would come oh, on yeah. and play, it could be this, and then someone's cell phone would ring. Like it would be like to a T, like it would pick it up in the, receiver and the speaker and it would have this weird little and it was always the same weird little rhythm and then it would someone's phone would ring it would work with tvs too crt tvs do it where it the speaker on the crt tv will give that sound is he is he messing with me jake yeah i do the same thing oh, okay it's that electromagnetic field that everything gives off yeah okay it's this weird little did it did 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 if you ever buy a subwoofer if you get a good one it should come with those big pack that you're supposed to pick on the power cable yeah so it dampens that field so you get a better sound huh that's like uh like this see these there's little magnets that that's a magnet inside that that wraps around this cable and that's supposedly to stop that but i'm guessing this cable's so cheap it probably didn't doesn't do it, it. probably reduces it a bit yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> the more you know I don't, I don't have it ready I, sorry it's I really need to get me one of those little USB, um, the little pads? the little pad. They're like I can get one for like twenty bucks, and you okay, can set well, a bunch of wave <laughs> sounds to them. Hey, you're so both I can just here. have them ready and hit it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you if you haven't caught on yet, this is a before the break show where we just talk about things that are important to us as as they come about. We got, Topical. We got a few things we want to talk about, but uh, um, question for both of my I- IT guys, I guess, or, or my technical enthusiast. Uh, I want to find a piece of equipment, run me about a hundred bucks, that will allow me to record audio without this. We, you see what I'm saying? We could get a, like maybe even a couple of inputs within it. But uh, you could, we could is get it, it possible for me to do that? That's not just on my phone or mm-hmm. not just an app on my iPad, but a piece of like self-sustaining equipment that I could use with young people. That we can record something. And then I could upload it onto the computer at a later time. How good audio are you talking? Well, well, I mean, you wouldn't have to have great audio if you had a. You I, could get at a digital least as good as audio that I get from a ten-year-old laptop. Well, I mean, you get. I mean, <laughs> you know, I used to have the old tape recorders, right? Now yeah. those have all been replaced with like solid-state recorders. Now, well, we tried one of those. Well, but right? you, it didn't have a line in. If you found one with a line in, then you could run the line in into that instead of running it like you do now. And then it would have like I I was just looking at those the other day when we get on the subject of what we were at, what we're getting to, yeah. Um, but uh, to looking at one to take to there to record and uh, I'd get one with like an SD card because then you could put a huge SD card in it and be able to record a ton of stuff. But why not your phone? Uh, I just wanted something separate that well. 
Well, really, so we, so we could take the podcast on the go first, and then second, uh, so I could use it in the classroom. But I don't want the kids to use my phone. If you have about getting just like we're i like like an iPod Touch, an iPod Touch, I, that might work. That would work, yeah. Or you, even even a regular i like the iPod, not Nano anymore. What's uh, their new version of that? The Shuffle, probably something know. close to that. Um, Ah, but but would they have I the adapter? It has memo record, but I don't know that I would be able to get the adapter for what? Because you would have to have a like three mics in, four mics in. No, no, no. I guess you would just use the headphone jack. Yeah, because the headphone jack takes input in. Yeah, yeah, that would work. We could fool around with it. Okay, that'd be my suggestion. Because I mean, like your best. I mean, your phone's probably got probably some of the best quality you're gonna get into, and it hell, also really depends on your. Hell, the microphone that you bought. That might work. You could probably download an app for your phone and plug that microphone directly into your uh, into your uh, iPhone. What microphone? That big long microphone you bought. Oh, that omnidirectional oh, oh, yeah, and directional yeah. microphone. Yeah. That you can use like ten feet away from somebody and yeah, catch the boom voice. mic. My boom yeah. mic. That thing would probably plug right into there, and there's probably an app that you could use. All right. Well. You just you got that saved me a hundred bucks. I mean, <laughs> you can even use the memo app. It's got voice recording. Yeah, um, and you could. I don't know how much you want to edit it on the fly, but you could. Well, if I could just get it off as an MP3, then I can edit it using my normal editing software. I would. Yeah, use a phone. I would. I wonder if that microphone has the setup right though for the the adapt the jack. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if it connects it right because that jack has three. Yeah. Connections because it's got input, right, output, right, right, left, yeah. and input. input. Yep. But I wonder if that microphone is lined up for input. I don't know. That's a good question. You could always we test have it to out. Check it. Yeah, we can figure it out. Okay. <laughs> does that answer your question? Yeah, because I was just going to use the camcorder. Just plug everything into the camcorder. Like we yeah, that's now. the other idea I had for the thing that we're going to talk about in a minute was um, possibly just take the camcorder and just uh, hold it. Okay. All right. So. Oh, we're going to talk about something in a minute, but we're going to talk about it now, so it's maybe it's a little more relevant <laughs> to what we're talking about now. Uh, and Jake's on the show, so I'm glad that Jake's on the show, because he can, he'll have lots of input, I hope, uh, to at least what's going on. Mike and I, and Doug, though Doug didn't go, um, he was busy, I guess. Uh, Mike and I went to a open house. I didn't house. get a reminder text. I almost sent you one, too, but I was like, it's 5.30. If we have to wait for him to show up, then we'll be late getting there. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so Mike and I got an invitation to an open house for a robotics club that's located right here in our hometown. And it's Physics FSY. I can. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Physics. I think it's S S P S P S Y X. I think is what it was. Uh, gears. 17, With a T? 1790. Yeah. Fit, P-H-Y-X-T gears is, yeah. is what it is. Team 1720. P-Y-X. P-Y, P-H-Y. I'm sorry. P-H-Y-X-T gears. I said P-S. I was doing like Psy yeah. instead. If you Google that, you'll find it. It's the first thing that shows up is 1720. But it is a, uh, it is a robotics club, not a program. <laughs> it's a robotics club that is... Uh, that is Associated with uh, First Robotics, which is a, a larger governing body. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, First Robotics is a lot of stuff, uh, as I've learned about it, um, that sort of encourages kids to get in there and play with robots and then, then gives them different sort of tasks that they can accomplish at varying levels of, of degree and entry. Even uh, not just robotics, but they also do things within computers and computer animation and graphic design and so forth. It's a really interesting program, which I think is... It's crazy that we don't know more about it, or it's yeah. not more mainstream. And um, but they invite, they uh, listen to the show, or actually, I reached out to them uh, long when they, when they were going towards nationals or world champions, I guess it is. When they when they made it to world champions, I reached out to them, and then they had sort of their busy busy season, and then they reached back to us probably two months ago, and then I was sort of waffling on what do we want to do how are we going to do this we finally sit down made contact with the with the president of their company and exchanged some some positive emails there and then you know invited us to the open house mike and i went i mean i was blown away first off you've got you've got um a lot of these programs are typically associated with a school it would be like uh the robots robot club equivalent of like football practice um yeah but this particular uh 
chapter or charter uh, is not associated with any one school. It leaves itself open for for, for public school students uh, who who can who would pay the price of admission. But also, they cater to. He, I think he said it was like seventy percent homeschool. Seventy percent homeschool kids. Seventy uh, percent homeschool kids. So kids within the region then that are are typically in a homeschool. I don't want to say program, but curriculum, homeschool curriculum, uh, can then join up um, with uh, this robotics team and help them get some of their STEM education or some of their STEM, you know, explore some of their STEM uh, desires. I don't know. Their, their, their interests. Their STEM, STEM interests. Their STEM desires. Okay, and if you don't know what STEM <laughs> is, it's STEM is uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm. So it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's good. I mean, it, it, it was... It's good for kids to pursue interests like that. I, I mean, it was a, it was sort of a, a blank canvas, and I think uh, uh, if I would have been involved in something like that in high school, I mean, I, I I would have been almost one of those kids that would have just been like, okay, it's too much, and I'm going to slowly walk out the door because without like a little bit more of like this is what I expect and this is what we want to do, I think I would have like panicked under the pressure at that time. Uh, <laughs> right. But, but I think a kid like Mike, a kid like Mike would have been like. Da Vinci in his workshop, he'd been like, he'd been like, I'm over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn how to create this graphic that has this awesome blender effect on it. And yeah. then as soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna 3D print this awesome piece that's gonna attach to my lightsaber at home. And then I'm gonna go over into the other shop. And I'm gonna build a giant like man-eating robot. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was super. <laughs> I kind of walked in the door when I started seeing actually what they were doing. And I want to explain a little bit. I want to explain the robot because I was really impressed with it. Okay. Um, well, can, let me go through the history of the yeah, robots here real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the program, uh, as far as we can tell, and we're not experts, we're hoping to actually have some people on the on the podcast that could be a little bit more. Uh, uh, you know, we can do a whole show on this. In fact, we're. we're might do a few shows on this in the future we're still in conversations with the uh the the president there and then uh and then trying to get involved with some of those kids there but um um it looks like it started around 2008 2009 that's like the earliest robot or the earliest date on a robot that i could find yeah so is that for first only or is that just th- this one here in months that would be this think, one here yeah, I mean, this okay. one in months and, and then the, the, give- the, the significant of 1790 is 20. that 1720 is that that's their charter number and they give them an order gotcha so like there's a few of those charters that are like in the five thousands now uh <laughs> But they said there's only actively about 3,000 teams or actually 3,000, 3,000. So, like, some people have formed and broke apart and so forth since then. Um, but, uh, I mean, 1720 is still pretty it's early on yeah, yeah. In, in, in the program. Um, but the way it works is in January, they basically give, the, in the robotics field, I guess I should say. Because, like I said, they have animation contests. They have graphic contests and logo contests and programming contests and, and, and just engineering problems. And, but in the, in the big daddy of the program... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say program. Yeah. And the big daddy of the the curriculum is is these giant robots. They're they they have to be able to fit within a certain shipping container. So there's some size restriction in their packed form. But when they're out on the field, they can pretty much unravel or unlay lay yeah. out in any different direction. But uh, a couple of different uh, challenges that have been set forth is that they they typically take three teams and put them on the same side, and they take another three teams and put them opposite of them. And each of them has a robot designed to to, they don't know each other beforehand, but like my team has a robot, your team has a robot, and Doug's team has a robot. And our goal right now is we might have the same instructions. So we talked a lot about the Ultimate Frisbee robot. That which was, was pretty cool. Which I think was like 2012, 2011, uh, if I'm sort of looking down the wall yeah. trying to count. You're probably wrong in the year, but yeah. I think I'm pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> the, the team the team can uh, send me a message on Facebook and let me know if I was right or wrong. But um uh, I think it was like 2011. The the game was more of an ultimate frisbee sort of game. So they, the robot had to be able to throw a frisbee, and then also had to have some sort of mechanism to catch frisbees to reload them. So they had this like a uh, wheel uh, that would spin. It looked like inside of a three by five or a five gallon bucket that had been cut down. Yeah. Uh, the wheel would spin, but it would shoot the frisbee out along this long arc so that it would get enough rotational force, and then it would flatten out and then and then basically take off. And then it had a large net at the top that they could use to sort of catch and and, 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 and grab frisbees, and then those would be automatically fed back into the oh, five-gallon nice. bucket. And then there was a nice... It had a nice mobility system to it as right. well. Not as... I mean, the ones they're using now is a, is a different game. I mean, oh. the, the, they're using rotational wheel... Uh, no, what do they call them? I can't remember the name of. But basically, it's a wheel that has a bunch of smaller wheels, little um, wheels on them. They're bent at a forty-five degree angle, 
So the wheels, with four wheels on the system, um, it can go forward and backwards. It can do a zero turn, but also it can move side to side so like based the, on like the turning of the wheels because the way that the wheels are connected... They can put different momentum on each wheel. Well, each wheel is independently powered. Yeah, powered so they can turn they can, them differently, and they move they, at a 45-degree angle. So what will happen is, is they push against each other, mm -hmm. and it causes it to be able to move side to side. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. it was... It, I would that was like that blew my mind. I was like, I've never seen wheels like that before. And of course, you've got this sophomore kid that's here explaining it to us, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, they've been on forklifts for a long time." Yeah, and Michael <laughs> and I are like, Michael, are like, I don't understand. I can see how it works, and I'm like, "Okay, if you turn this one clockwise and this one counterclockwise, it will like corkscrew." But it's going to add this sort of yeah. velocity to it, and then if you do it backwards, it's going. Oh, okay, all right, I get it, I get it. But he's just like, uh, they have better ones on on forklifts in yeah. a large factory. <laughs> but we were slowly blow, blown away by that. But anyway, um, so they had decent mobility in this Frisbee throwing. Uh, and then basically that they get the rules. They, they yeah. has to fit this certain size. And then there's points involved. You know, points if you catch Frisbees, points if you throw yeah. Frisbees, points if you get Frisbees from one side. There's also like... Uh, some of the games are all different nuanced. But uh, like uh, the, the current game system that's ending right now or the current game curriculum that's ending right now had like a noodle thing involved, which... They thought was going to be really important, but ended up not being important because of the sort of the dexterity of the robots. Didn't make sense to to, to yeah. put priority on that. Gotcha. But um, I it was just a it, the, so each one of these robots is built for a year. Um, they they run competitions through a year, and then by March, April, May, depending on how far you go up in the ranking system, that robot is essentially done. They have a lot of little like regional challenges. Like this weekend, they're in Indianapolis. At, uh, what rage? I think it's what it is. It's a. It's actually a girls robot. Team. Something in girls. Something. So so only the girl students will be able to go down and actually pilot and run the. Robot. I think they can all go. I think they're the only ones that are allowed to work yeah, on, as the team at that time. So um, this year's was really cool though because so what they do is as he explained in the year that in like January the beginning of January there's this big turnout event like this webcast that tells them the new game and so then they have six weeks to design and build their robot and they spent close to like i think it was in a few it was like four thousand dollars i think in this last robot or something like that yeah but it was, I mean, it was high like five but, grand but he said they had sponsorships to help right. them sort of yeah so sort of meet that so what goal. this one was is that it was all based on uh packing totes if you know anything about like the totes that have like the intertwined lids the plastic they totes yeah that flip open tops and stuff that most comp companies yeah. use to ship their stuff well it was based around those so what they did, um, the game involves stacking those as many as you could. I'm um, going up, picking up them up, six. up to six. I'm um, going up, picking up, up to six, stacking them from where they're at and moving them or however you did it. It's up to you on your robot and getting them in these staging platforms. Then there were trash cans that if you got the trash can on top of that stack, didn't matter how, if the trash can ended up on top of it, you got extra points for oh, that wow. stack. And the trash cans were set around the place. So, in the games, in all the games, the first 30 seconds, they have three minutes is the game time. The first 30 seconds, they can set up the robot wherever they want to on the playing field. The first 30 seconds has to be autonomous. So, the, it is programmed to do whatever it needs to do, but it has to do it on its own. So, it gives it a whole other play that they have to do this thing. So, the way that this robot was designed, it was very straight up and down, and it had an arm, a reaching arm on the back, and then it had two, basically the same wheels, but a little bit bigger that were on the bottom uh, of it that came out in front of it. So, the arm on the back, they would line it up at the first 30 seconds because of where the trash cans were. The arm would go out, pick up a trash can, and pull it back and drop it. So then, after those 30 seconds are up, they could turn the system around. And I was amazed when he was telling us all about the robot. I was just shocked the minute I heard three minutes. Because I was like, this thing must move fast. And he was like, oh, yeah, it can go. And then they turned it on and started moving. And I was like, this thing can book. Like, it can really get going. And so... Yeah, he, we, wa we watched the girls practice there towards the end of the open house. And they were able to get their... I don't think they were running an autonomous at the beginning. No, they they weren't. They were practicing getting their buckets, but uh, they would start and they'd put like the three minute timer on their clock, and they yeah. would get six. Of, they would they would pick up the trash can first, 
and they could pick up six. Boom, 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 and the wheels are spinning and shooting so, inside. Yeah. So it what it does is they they would knock the trash can out, and then the way that their system worked is they had little clips on the side because the way the design on those totes were is that it had little lips on the side yeah. of it. So what would happen is is they would go and move basically their arms, their side arms around the trash can. And that they would lift up the trash can. And then they would go up and the, the wheels were sticking out in front of it that spun. And it would get a hold of a, a, of a tote and it would grab it. The wheels would spin and pull it in. And then they would bring the arms down. And the arms had these clips that would lock into the tote. It would lift it up. And the next one would go up and grab another one and pull it in. The arms would oh, drop down cool. and keep stacking and stacking and stacking. Just in this little like three foot by three foot area and it was just flying through these things i mean it was crazy how quick it would shoot a toad in and be able to stack it up and then it could carry them wherever they would need to go mm -hmm. and they i mean they would turn too quick and the the um trash can would fall off or something like that but but they were they were really good with it i was like i, w I was looking at this thing no working in a warehouse for five years i was looking at this thing going holy crap this could be used in a warehouse <laughs> without problems you know, like without without any issues, you 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 encase all that stuff in metal, and you could be using this in a warehouse today. It was amazing, and and the the coordination between the girls that were piloting it was pretty impressive too, because they have essentially one laptop that just gives them readouts of of, of what's going on. But typically, that's only for the autonomous portion. If I got this right, and then also just their local like they don't get that they don't get that in competitions. Yeah, so they're given something else to control it for that, so they can't. Basically, it has to be disconnected, so there's no issues with yeah. um, my robot connect. connecting to your yeah, robot. Yeah, yeah, different RF but, uh, but, the, but then they have they're essentially doing all this with just three uh, USB joysticks. Yeah, uh, the one girl was was controlling the wheels with two uh, joysticks, and the other girl's controlling the arms and the uh, oh, nice. and, and the rollers, and, and then the up and down of the uh, of the forks. I guess. Yeah. So I mean, it, I mean, they they were tweaking some things and they were replacing the clips because the clips get worn out. Yep. They were just using it looked like just thick plexiglass that they heated up and hey, bent hey, to the hey, right don't, angle. Don't give out like secrets. And they're done. <laughs> That's with true. This. So and they bent it to just the correct angle that they needed to, and then they were clipping them and trying to make them the right height to where it wasn't causing it to bend or because gotcha. they, they, they originally and, and, and this is sort of the, the essence of the product. This is the essence of why they're doing it. Uh, and that is because when they put their clips on, they sort of had the idea that if the, the front clips were a little higher than the back clips, then it would sort of sit back a little bit and allow them to hold a little more, allow, allow the trash can to sort of lean into the robot, gotcha. and that would add some stability. Well, what happens is, 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 is the clips were just a little too high. So why we were there, we were watching them feed in these totes and then it was going up and it was actually popping against the back side of the robot actually lifting up on the the back side of its support and if and if they wouldn't have already sort of engineered these tension bands along the back i feel like we would have probably saw a fairly catastrophic failure what yeah, do you think well because it would have popped would have got it back together it right. would have popped and then split mm -hmm. um i just feel like there were other support beams but there's a lot there. of torque going on there with yeah. that with that ball with that ball screw but uh so they so they sort of they had they had these kids, I mean, the oldest one was a senior. They were, yeah, they were all high school girls. Um, uh, well, then there well, was, them, many, there was mean, a couple there boys actually. there working. Huh? How many girls were there, actually? Well, there were this, three girls that were currently practicing that night. Yeah, but the the boy that we was we were talking to, we talked to him for probably a good 45 minutes just explaining the robot to us, and it, that kid knows his stuff. I mean... That kid's going places. Let's just say that. That kid's going to get him in. He's going to be in a good school, and he's going to go far. I they mean, said they said three out of five kids that graduate from a first program get a scholarship to college. Not just go mm -hmm. to college, but get a scholarship That's to awesome. college. Um, which, I, which I thought was pretty. Oh, impressive. yeah. that was. I mean, it, every kid we talked to there. I mean, we sit down. They had a group of guys that were doing animation, and they showed An us. An award-winning. Yeah, animation. they showed us their animation, and it was awesome. I mean, it was really funny. It Didn't was, you want to say at one point, in Mother Russia, we don't have no ant. It was this funny story about an ant that was going in. And well, hold on. Let, let's do it this way. So the theme that they had to do is they had to talk about how a, 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 a bug can get into a robot and then make it hurt people. Like a, like a, like a, like I think they were like a computer. It bug just said or, bug is yeah, all it said. Yeah. And they took it as an actual bug. So they, so they, they, they had no, an nice. ant, an ant 
break into like a server room basically and shoot out this these uh, little missile things to basically blow up part of this the the server room for this thing and he's had this thick the, Russian the, accent like it was a Russian ant the, spy. The, it was the uh, the the server was adequate. The, that portion of the server was was appropriately labeled. Uh, robots must not harm humans. Oh so yeah, yeah. With, yeah. That, gotcha. with that one gone, then the robots had free reign. But nice. it was it was very well done. I mean, it was really funny. It had a it had this this niche to it that that made me yeah. laugh. And but, it had a really nice aesthetic. I mean, the kids knew what they were doing. Oh, and that's good. It good. was. It's pretty awesome. So the cool thing about it is, is it's not just kids that can build or kids that can that do robotics or program. I mean, they had a, a web, a, a wall web, of basically showing 1720, and then it broke off into design, web development, um, programming, animation, uh, financing, like accounting, and like all these different stems, and showing, and then in those stems, like what was all needed, oh, nice. and so each kid could step in and fill one of those or roles. Adult, or yeah, or or a mentor can help them with that situation and work with them. Because some that. of it was like you know, logistics, like hotel yeah, yeah. booking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, all these prep. all these things have to be filled, and uh, and I mean we were talking to the animation kids, and they were said, well, we're kind of part of marketing too because we design things for the marketing team for our team and yeah. stuff like that. So they and they know how to work together, and one of the cool things was they things come up, and the mentors treat it as life skills where they. Basically, there was a situation where this rule was kind of interpreted wrong a few years ago. And basically, they came to him and said, you guys designed this to do this. Basically, there was a height requirement, and their robot was going to be over this height requirement because it was going to well, climb this pole. Explain it. So they had like an arm that would start loaded back, and then it would rise up above the height requirement. But by the time it would launch on, it was below the height gotcha. requirement. Well, the, the governing body said, no, at no point can that arm breach that 36-inch height requirement. And they found out about so. this, like, uh, it was like three days, I think, before they, they had to yeah. they had to actually compete. And But the mentors basically said, look, this is just like your, uh, your you know, client coming to you and saying, no, that's the wrong color blue. I need yeah. it in this, and I need it tomorrow. And is it going to cost me more money in this, this, and this? And you can't say no. You just have to deal with it, and you have to fix it. And... And it was a good life lesson that, oh, yeah. that the kids are going to get from that to realize, yeah, things happen like that, and you got to figure it out. And I took that as that's that's good mentoring, in my oh, yeah, opinion, definitely. that they to to do that to be able to take those kids and go, look, this this is how this is going to affect you during your life. When you get a job, you, this will happen, and you will have to deal with it. And this is a great example of that to know how you're going to handle it. I thought it was awesome. I had a good time. Fantastic. What do you think, Doug? I don't think we need to have a guy on now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, this is the whole spiel here. <laughs> no, there's a lot more. I mean, there's there's a lot more to it. So, well, uh, I got to do the there's the little kid version, which is like Lego robots use the mind storms. I got to yeah. judge that, and might have been in April of last year. But they have like anywhere from like six to like ten year olds making. They have like nine. Yeah objectives they have to do and it was crazy the kid the kid the sophomore that we talked to for a long time josh i think is his name john he john he uh he actually started with mindstorm when he was a yeah. kid and he was doing that stuff and actually the the um robot that they're using now he prototyped on a mindstorm system that's cool. so that's where their their prototype design came from was on mindstorm so nice. and they had a couple of those laying out where they were you know showing off that they use those and stuff like that. That mind sword stuff is pretty cool. Yeah, it's coming a long ways. It's it's pretty cool. So, but there might be more to come about that. I mean, we're in talks to maybe do a show or two or figure something out with them, and uh, we'll see what comes of that. So, well, I think it'll be neat. That well, I think it's a really neat opportunity that people need to realize that's available and. Take advantage of it if they if, if it would fit their 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 young people, their students' curriculum, or if they have a a desire to learn more about it. I mean, they they were really pushing for mentors, and it's one of those things that were, <coughs> you know, that sorry, excuse me, like I already feel like there's a lot of thin stretched within myself personally, but uh, with 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 other things I'm already volunteering and being a part of, but I, I want to try to find ways to give. More time because I thought it was a pretty worthwhile uh, check it out or activity. Um, seven. 
um, 1720gears.blogspot.com is their blog um, that can tell you a little bit more about them. Um, and, and, if and you it, are interested in mentoring or going over there, I mean, they meet every Tuesday, I think. Well, um, I wouldn't just show up. I would contact them first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, don't, don't give me your address, Mike. Uh, but yeah, the, the, um, I, that, they also stream it on Ustream. When the build season kicks in, you can, you can check in on Ustream. And they were streaming it the night that we were there. Um, oh, nice. I should have tweeted out, hey, check us out on Ustream. I'm leaning over this bench watching these kids work on this awesome robot. Um, yeah, the president he he didn't even know where that the camera was. He was like, "Wait, where is that camera?" <laughs> so it's way over here. <laughs> he was like, "Yeah." The other guy was making fun of him about it. It was pretty funny. So yeah, it was a good time. It really was a good time had by all. And I left there to I left my house. I told my wife I was like, "I'll be back in probably thirty minutes." I mean, I, it's an open house. We'll go in. We'll see what's going on. We'll get the information. We'll come back. I yeah. strolled in like three hours later. Yeah, well, that was yeah, good. We, time. we were there the whole time. I yeah. mean, it was good. Um, so that took thirty minutes. Mike, you want to go and just tell tell your story? <laughs> my story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of what happened today? Well, so you said something happened today. I was going to yeah. do jury duty, but. Really, there's not much to say other than the fact that well, I Well, this will lead into it. Was it a murder? I, 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 uh, kind of, yeah. Wait, can you talk about it? Yeah, it was in the paper. I, I'm like, not... It wasn't the little kid that got smashed, was it? No, it was... Uh, it happened in 2011. Well... Go ahead. You want no, to, I'll, you want, finish, I'll finish with a bang. <clears throat> okay. Uh, basically, I, I was called in a jury on... No pun intended on my story, by the way. Oh. Uh, no, I was called in a jury duty... Uh, <laughs> Uh, this was essentially the second defendant that was going to be tried for the same sort of case. It happened in, in 2011. A woman was, was killed, and then subsequently they tried to hide the evidence by burning her body on the side of the road here in town. Oh, uh, I don't know if you would, would call that. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. It was Funcy uh, Muncy. Uh, December 2nd, 2011. December 3rd is when they got caught, essentially. And why I bought a house in Muncy makes me always wonder. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be honest. If I learned anything from the uh, the trial is, is that it is... Uh, we may live in the same town, but there's two different towns here. Oh, yeah. There there's, are definitely two different towns. There's a scary uh, part of Muncie. There is a scary part of Muncie. And um, this was just whether or not the uh, woman uh, that was... The state was pressing charges against the woman that she helped remove evidence and helped... Uh, the, was attempting to help the, so the, like the, the, the murder. Yeah, where the, she was trying to help him evade arrest. And her story essentially was that she was in this house. There was a dead body. She didn't know who who did it or how it got there, but her kids were sleeping upstairs, and um, <clears throat> she was terrified for her life. So, of course, she helped him do whatever he told her to do in order to hide the body, which included, you know, hauling it up a flight of stairs from the basement, uh, included putting it into her her friend's vehicle and driving it all the way out to Parker, driving the 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 the, the deceased all the way out to Parker City, then turn around all the way back to Muncie because they couldn't find a wooded area between Muncie and Parker City. Is there a giant reservoir out there? Well, I mean, there, there's especially next to Parker City. You could just turn anything, turn anywhere. Yeah. You would mm-hmm. be not. But instead, in the infinite wisdom of dumb criminals, I mean, honestly, if criminals were smart, that police would never catch them. Is my is my full. But I if you're know, smart, yes, I might say anything. But, but, crazy but, shit. Well, <laughs> that, that's how that's how the prosecution like started their discussion. They were like, "We don't have a machine that can come in and test the air for any odorizers. <laughs> that's CSI stuff. It's not real." But. Um, Drove the, the, the deceased all the way back to Muncie to actually a, a populated area that with out by Muncie's Steel and Wire, where that used to be. Is Dro- that big, pulled, like, empty parking yeah, yeah, like pulled, like, yeah. maybe eight yeah. feet off the side of the road. Dumped gasoline on a woman's body at 6 o'clock in the morning when the sun's coming up, or 6.45 in the morning when the sun's coming up. Got back in the vehicle and, and drove off where she was burning. And then proceeded to, like... Hang out, drop off some clothes, try to sell some pills to buy some drugs. And then when somebody finally got to her and was like, you're going to go to jail for what you did. She immediately flipped a switch, ran up to the police station and tried to turn him in like she was terrified for her life. But she was guilty. Did you did you get to read the... The verdict? No, actually, it's... Uh, you weren't juror number one? Uh, well, it doesn't matter which jury you Head are. You're, you're, the jury foreman is elected by sort of the jury itself. Uh, I, I'm i a... I'm not very good at hiding my emotions in situations like that. I was 
basically grumpy and pissed off the whole entire week that we have to i mean i kept going back to you're supposed to be judged by a jury of your peers and i am not this woman's peer <laughs> like i like i am i i would like to think that that, that we you are have a prejudgment going apart. into this i didn't have a prejudgment to the to to that i mean I, I really tried to stay as neutral as possible but the the evidence was monumental and, and the immediately you took away everybody's testimony that may or may not be going to jail and just look about look at the testimony of the people that didn't have a dog in the fight or a horse in the race or was never going to go to jail regardless of what they said it became very apparent that that everybody was lying that had a stake in it and i mean if you've got nothing to hide why are you lying so I, I look. I mean, I'm I'm very black and white when it comes to the law. I mean, I, really, I am. I know I break the law every time I get in the car, and I don't immediately put my seatbelt on. I understand I break the law, and if a police officer wants to pull me over six inches on my driveway and give me a ticket for it, I will pay it. That's fine. I understand. I break the law. Would you complain a little bit? I would probably be grumpy, <laughs> but I mean, I would I would pay it. In fact, I have. I've. Um, but but. I'm pretty black and white when it comes to the law. I mean, I feel like that's what it's there. Like, do I think marijuana is incredibly harmful to people? Probably not. But it's against the law. So regardless of whether or not it's going to hurt you or it's better than worse than alcohol, one of them you can buy a marsh and the other one you can't. We already <laughs> covered this. I know. But but but, so I, but I'm just saying he asked me if I was prejudgment. Let's not that. go and rehash that. <laughs> hash, hash, uh, nice pun. Yeah. Um, but uh, but pun so intended. when... <laughs> early in the early in the trial during jury selection the prosecutor who's who you know his job is to make us like him as much as possible um really he's the prosecutor he yeah. wants the jury to like him he made the joke about how uh you know him and the him and the, the defense attorney he's not sure who all does it but everybody eventually sort of guesses who's going to be the jury foreman like early on by like who's paying attention and who's whatever um so he sort of made that statement so after it was all said and done I asked him afterwards. So who who do you think was going to be the foreman? And uh, because after it was all said and done, he came in and the judge came in and they sort of talked about the process. And then then we could ask any question there that maybe we wanted to know as common citizens, not as jury members that weren't supposed to be informed outside of the defenses. You know what I mean? Like like it yeah. was it was a really I didn't know that that ever happened. You mean but, like what happens if I really got to go to the bathroom? No no no. <laughs> it was like it was like if it was like the trial was over, she was guilty. Right. She was taken away. To, to jail and then awaiting sentencing which will happen sometime this week um but um you know she was just like you know we would ask questions like why wasn't this person on the stand we heard about him all the time how come you never had him and then the prosecutor was really cool about sitting there and sort of explaining his thought process about why he put who on the stand and why and then why he presented the information in that way and i, I and then the we you know the judge said she couldn't tell us what whether she felt our decision was right or wrong she has to stay impartial in that manner she said but she did say that you know her perception because she also tried over the first guy's trial she was the judge at his murder where he was convicted murder okay. uh, convicted of murder um she sort of explained why she sentenced him for 65 years and she sort of explained like. <laughs> well yeah i mean um she uh like the guy's I don't know. She said it a lot more eloquently than yeah, I, yeah. I can at this point. But essentially, she knows that giving him in there for 65 years is the same as life, yeah. but without a life sentence. And yeah. the people do look at that about states and so forth, about what sentencing links and so forth that we, we assign our criminals to. Um, but um, she uh, she sort of narrated out what her, what she believed was the final sort of events of the woman's life based on what she witnessed in the, in the, in the murder trial. And then her story sort of jived up with my story, and it sort of made me feel a little bit better about, you know, I, I did do the right thing. I did make the right decision. I was interpreting the evidence the same way as that most people were, I assume. But uh, uh, I was I was very grumpy, and I was very mad, and I was very ticked off, and I thought, you know, I, I made a very impassioned speech during jury selection about how you 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 forcing a teacher to miss five percent of his class time because I knew that the, the jury was going to be a minimum of five days. Um, you 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 making me miss five days of my class time is like asking somebody else to give your closing arguments. You just wouldn't do it. I only have one chance with these kids, and they're going to go to become fifth graders, and I don't want to leave it in the hands of a substitute. I mean, I, I'm just really impassioned and really sort of debated my points. I you think really fairly trying well. To get out of it, huh? Well, I I didn't want to. I, I didn't, told him that okay. was his problem. He should just okay. go there and be like. Effort. Yeah. Well, well, the <laughs> they, they would have. Like, they've been like next. Yeah. I didn't want to necessarily get out of it. 
if I was needed to serve. Because I do believe it's my right as a citizen in this mm-hmm. country. And, and, and if I was ever wrongfully accused and I found myself in the defendant's seat, I would want normal, rationalized people not trying to get out of it. And then there was a sect of people that I had seen on the jury selection who, you know, uh, you know, being very manipulative of the jury system and then like talking about how they, you know, their feelings is hurt and they just can't do it. And then they'd immediately like get up and like wink to the other, wink to their buddies as they walk by. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, you're, you, who are you hurting now other than, you know, the justice system? Did you have anyone going, yes, I could pay 50 bucks today. Wait, is it 50 uh, bucks every day or just one day? Uh, it's 50, 50 bucks a day. It's $40 a day that you get picked. It's $15 if you show up for jury selection. Yeah. $15. So you walk out with that money? No, they send it to you. And the way that my school works, um, I have to basically give them the check, endorse it and give them the check. And then they won't ding me my personal days and I'll just get my normal salary. What? Well, I, I get paid more well, than 50 bucks a day. Well, he gets paid more, you know, so. I get paid more than 50 bucks a day if I just take my normal salary and I don't. Wait, hold on, hold on. As a teacher, if you are selected for jury duty, they can take it out of your personal time? I, if I keep the money. I would have told them to shh. Well, it, it hasn't happened yet, Jake, and I'll be honest, that conversation is coming because the way I see it is it's not like I left. No, I was at school every morning. I made sure there were subplans every day. I graded every piece of work that I left when I was gone. So it's not like I wasn't doing my job for those five days. I was doing my job for five days for the hours that I could be there. You were selected for jury duty. It's like going, if you got selected, to, if you're in the National Guard and you're a teacher, you get selected to go overseas. You don't get... Well, we're going to dock your pay because you weren't here and take all your... Per- what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> Never yeah. mind. We can skip this conversation. Well, and, <laughs> like I said, that's a conversation I hope to have in-house calmly, and hopefully they'll see reason. I would give uh, them the bird and just walk out. Be like, mainly, this. mainly just because I, I do feel like I did my job. I do feel like I was still doing my job as a teacher, and I should be penalized for sure my civic duty. Job, though. Well, so, uh, <laughs> so we... we uh, are you on a uh, house or not house arrest? What is it? Witness protection now? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm house not, arrest. Honestly, yeah. I'm not worried about anything like That's that. That's what Maybe. the extra car is outside. This is a, it's a, uh, whatever a federal agent watching. No, us. I'm not. I'm not really concerned about it. It's a sad situation where where where, where you know somebody is now going to go to jail, but it's a decision that she put herself in there, and I don't think anybody's going to come looking for me. Now I have a question. I'm not very well. I do believe in stereotypes to a bit. But was she your typical stereotype person to be involved with this? Um, she has made repeatedly poor decisions throughout her okay. life that basically led, I think, to that to that evening. Gotcha. I just, Good uh, answer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. But, but I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, he can't say that. I'm, I mean, I wouldn't say that if I I saw her at Walmart or something, you know, just shopping with her kids or something. I'd you would have a slight bit of. Oh, like if I actually saw her now in Walmart? No, no, like oh. beforehand. If you'd saw her in Walmart, you'd be like, "Is that the kind of person that go burn a body at six o'clock in the morning in a relative public place, uh, and I then go sell I, drugs?" Again, again, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I try to really give her the benefit of the doubt, but uh, it's just a lot of a lot of poor decisions. And that's why he was on the jury. Yep. Okay, so then I asked the guy when we left. I said, "So who did you bet was going to be the the foreman? Who? I mean, did you did you pick?" Uh, the the lady that ended up being the foreman and he said he was like nope uh we actually picked you we thought you were going to do it and he said and, and good thing i kept my wallet in my pants because i, w- I would have again got it wrong and then the judge piped up and she said actually uh most of us in the court office thought it was going to be you too so i was just like no because we sat down at a table much bigger than this with a lot more people in it the room though is not much bigger than this um and, and they sort of opened the forum of who wanted to be foreman and who wanted it. And, and the, the, the discussion was sort of very short and brief, but I knew that I didn't want to throw myself into the ring because I had such strong feelings about it already. I didn't want to necessarily... You're such a good juror. <laughs> I, don't, I hope they don't think that. I, don't, I, I can immediately like, be released. We can't wait to get him back in here. <laughs> I, I can immediately be released for the next 24 months. I can walk in and just be like, bam, I did it, I'm done, and I can walk back out. But uh, but month twenty five. Yeah, he's gonna be called right back up. Well, I even t- I said you call me in July. I'll be here with, with with bells and whistles. I'll be excited to serve in July. Just don't make me serve during the hundred and eighty days that I'm actually get, that I actually get a chance to work. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like like I said when it was all said and done, I was thankful that I was there because you know I survived. I learned a 
ton about the justice system. And in the deliberation room, I think it, my ability to speak to like a nine and 10 year old intelligence, I think was really helpful for everybody in the room. <laughs> now question. In that small room where you guys were, is it always filled with Chinese food and smell really bad and really hot? <laughs> Every time I see a TV show, they got their sleeves rolled up and they're all sweating and yeah, uh, eating <laughs> profusely takeout. I assume it was going to be like 12 angry men. <laughs> it was actually like seven angry ladies and four uh-huh. dudes. But uh, no, it wasn't bad. They did like, buy, like they don't buy you food. During, he was like the Henry the Fonda. Of they the, don't buy you. No, I wasn't. Uh, they don't buy you food uh, that, during the court the trial itself you're just released on your own for for an hour of lunch break yeah. uh during deliberations they do buy they bought us like m- two medium pizzas for 14 people wow. <laughs> so you uh, split a half a piece or something uh i actually sort of just had like four pieces and called it a day <laughs> <laughs> Ma- mainly because I look, look, look out the pizza <laughs> look out no i just had i just had the because really it is a, it is a very small room this. it is a very small room and I thought, you know what, I'm okay with us giving us just a little bit of pizza, because maybe if we stay hungry, we'll get out before 9.30. So I'm going to eat it all, so all of you are <laughs> going to stir. I'm going to speed this process along. Yeah, I just, I, I thought, it, I, like I said, it was a good experience. I think, I honestly think it's it's one of those things that everybody who basically pays taxes and is a law-abiding citizen should have to do once. I've been, I, I've been picked. I wouldn't say five days, but I hope not nobody picked, ever has to do it. I had to go to I had to go to Fort Wayne. I had to go to like, I like dare federal the federal line. pool. I had got gotten the federal pool and I twice. That'd been cool. Twice I got pulled up there. Yeah, that's what it all it all be like. I'm gonna say if if it ever happens, I just hope it's like an OJ case. <sighs> so at the end, you know that at least you're gonna get something good out of it. I mean, a book deal you know, a or book something. Deal. <laughs> yeah. So. That's out. That's what I'm writing. I'm writing an, American, an, American an American juror. That's your title. Oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> so I. Oh, the Middletown. Four juror. slices. Yeah, of the, pizza. the Middletown juror. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't necessarily want to over. I, I'm not trying to say I did more than I did. I just, it's it. It was an interesting to be a part of that. Group. I wish you were wearing, wearing an American flag shirt right now. No, no. <laughs> I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a lodge shirt. It's good enough. <laughs> it's the same thing. Uh, I just, I, I was, I'm proud I did my service, and I, and I hope other people get an opportunity. I, you're right. I don't want people to break laws, Doug. But if laws are broken, I hope people get a chance to serve. It's, well, it's an interesting. Let's talk about who broke a law. Let's talk about who broke let's, a law. Let's, today, talk, Mike. let's talk about who broke a law. I was threatened to go to jail today. I was told I was going to go to jail today by a harassed. by a huge, disgusting man. Uh, basically, here's what happened. You talking about me? No. Oh. So I pull up at a at a uh, gas station here in town. Just so happens to be the one that my mother runs. Um, happened to be inside buying it's not some this items. One right here, is it? No, it's okay. it's down the road. No, that's a uh, that's owned by other people. But anyways, uh, so it was a sp- other people. It was a speedway. It was a speedway. Gotcha. So um, where I pull up, I go inside. I'm talking to my mom, telling her, you know, whatever. Talking to her about a bunch of stuff. I said, oh, I forgot to get gas. Let me go get gas. So we get in the car and pull out of the parking space and we pull up and there's this lovely old lady in this little tiny little car, a little Ford <laughs> Focus, I think is what it is. And I don't know if she thought she was on the wrong side for her gas tank or, or what, but the lady seemed very confused. She was turning around, trying to do this like turn around around like a bunch of cars and uh, trying to figure out exactly which way she was facing. And, like, at one point she was making this turn, and this guy in a truck was looking at her, and he had, like, a gas can in his hand. He was, like, looking at the way she was trying to turn. He was, like, he shook his head, like, no, you're not going to be able to make that. Like, and this lady's kind of, you see her in the car, and she's kind of laughing, like, I don't know what is even going on. <laughs> this lady was so old. I mean, she had to been in, in her mid to late 80s. I mean, she she looked just feeble. So which golden girl does she remind you of? Uh, the the mother. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Of the golden girls. I mean, that's seriously. Now that you mentioned that, yeah. So, so I'm watching this, and uh, let me paint the picture. So I'm looking down the down the lanes. Okay, I'm looking down two sides of the gas tanks. Okay. No point. Did you try to help? We're getting to that. Oh, okay. So here's what happens. So this lady, she's trying to curve around and stuff like that. And there's parking. It's a very tight. It's a very tight uh, parking space. 
there the people that pull up to in front of the gas station it's very hard to get around those cars to get into the gas to get to the pumps at this particular one so this lady's turning around and i'm kind of at a weird angle and the gas cans are gas tanks are right in front of me the pumps and uh i see her back up and i see the car of behind her bump i see that she bumped him she rear rear end to rear end the car just nudged up a little bit yeah. okay it doesn't like she slammed in this this car so she's kind of turning around and she's still trying to figure it out and she goes to pull up and this dude with like like capri cut off nasty stained sweatpants this flowing shirt that he's just kind of falling out of because he's like 400 pounds comes trumbling out of this car okay and she this lady's just barely moving along just getting ready to line up to the gas tank he comes up and he, i'm out of my car and i'm getting ready to pump gas and he starts banging on her car i mean he is smacking her car and so she stops and she's like what is you see her she's kind of confused she turns around and she rolls down her window the guy just livid just you ain't going anywhere you ain't running away from me stop your car right now i'm calling the police you hit my car and she was like and you hear it she's like what like she's like didn't know anything happened she gets out of the car and she's standing there and the guy's like you stay right here you're not running away you're going to jail and like he's like i'm calling the cops and i step up i said dude you need to calm down Okay, and as I'm telling him this, this other guy's getting out of his car, and he comes walking up, and both of us are telling this guy, no, you need to calm down, you need to walk away, because he is right in this old lady's face, just screaming at her, and he's telling us, you two need to get away from me, you're both going to jail, this is, and he starts cussing, he's screaming about all this stuff, and Sarah gets out of her car, and she grabs, she grabs a, what? Yeah, where's, where's the video, Mike? So, but because I was, guy I was like, in the uh, moment. He'd burn bodies and sell drugs. Yeah, right? yes, he does. <laughs> so he he has a smaller, um, looked like possibly a mail order bride, um, <laughs> an Asian lady wife that was with him, and he's over here yelling at us, and he's screaming at this old lady. I said, no, you need to calm down. You need to go away. That's both both of it. Uh, both of me and this other guy, and he's getting on his phone. He's like, I'm calling the cops right now, and you both are going to jail if you don't get away from me. And he's like screaming, and Sarah walks over, my wife, and she takes the old lady, and I said, I said, listen, how much gas do you need? And she's like, I'm standing right beside her. And she goes, I can't hear what you're saying. Like, she couldn't even hear me talking to her. And so I lean in. I say, how much gas do you need? Was it my mother-in-law? No. Oh. But she <laughs> says, she says, she says, I, I think I, I'll get $10. I said, listen, I'll pump your gas. You go inside. You just go inside. I'll pump your gas for you. You just you just go away. You know, don't don't be out here. And so this guy's still freaking out. And so I pump her gas and I get it done. And the other guys, the other guys telling the guy he needs to calm down. And he needs to walk away. And he finally did, walks did you away. Give her premium or mid grade or just the just the low stuff. But oh, man. it was a Ford Focus. It would handle it just fine. So, <laughs> anyways, so this guy like finally, he, you know, he's calling the cops. He gets off the phone and he comes over and he takes a picture of my license plate. I said, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I need this for witnesses. I'm like, really? I, I was like, I, seriously, man? Are you, are you that crazy? I'm saying this to the dude. Are you, you really that nuts? Like, And so he walks over to the other guy's car. His kids are in the car. His wife is there. The guy stands in front of his license plate. He just stands there. And the guy walks up. He goes, you need to move. I need to get a shot of your license plate. And he's screaming at this guy. He's walking towards the car. His kids start freaking out. So his wife calls the cops. Because this guy is starting to scream at this guy now about this situation. Was there uh, any damage to the cars, Mike? A little paint. A little paint on okay. each car. That right. was it. I mean, you could probably could have scuffed it off with your finger and everybody would have been fine. No no, no harm, no foul. But he but, was driving a Lamborghini. I will admit, no. Yeah. Her car was much nicer than his. I will admit, the old lady did have some yellow paint on the side. Didn't come from this. She's hit. Uh, she has rear-ended other How, stuff. So we're talking old, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, she really didn't know what was going on. She kept thanking everyone for being so <laughs> nice to her. This nurse walks up as she's standing out there and, and during this whole thing. And she's, are you okay? Is everything okay? And the wife walks up. The, the, of the guy. And she's like, nah, she hit her car. And the nurse goes, you need to back up. 
like the finger out in her face. You need to back up. Is what the lady, and the lady was like, I ain't yelling at anybody. This and the other. She just, you need to back. It was just so funny that nurse just instantly went like nurse mode. Like must have worked in the ER or something like that. Like knew how to treat people and stuff. So I was like. I'm That's st- how you treat people. The, the, she must work a ball. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you run into that situation. So, oh yeah. So anyway, so I pump the lady's gas. The guy's walking around. He's doing all this stuff. So then the other dude comes over and takes a picture of this guy's license plate. And then that makes that dude mad. The the dude that got rear-ended. And I come walking out. And he goes, you guys better hang out here because I'm going to need the witnesses. And I looked at the dude and I said, yeah, man, I know. I said, do you want me to call, call a tow truck? Because your car might have got totaled in this thing. So <laughs> if you want to get me, I can call one up for you. And that really made the dude mad. I was like, I was, I'm. I was just shocked. It was it was a shocking moment of these. Just I'm serious. Like, have you ever bumped another car and it just kind of moves oh, yeah. the car? car? Didn't you know? Can't even roll because the brakes are on, kind of thing. And uh, so the cops show up. Like three cop cars show up because two people called the cops about he's calling, he's yelling. These people are calling, he's ye- they're yelling. And I'm just standing there waiting. I'm like, what's your mom do? She's just inside, and she goes. And I, I went in and talked to her later about the situation. I told her the whole thing was going on because she's just like, she can't do anything about it, you know? So I told her the whole situation. She goes, yeah, that guy comes in all the time. He's a jerk. Like the guy that the, yeah. the situation happened to. Is he a listener? I hope so. If he is, we're <laughs> yeah. blocking him because he's a jerk. But anyway, so the cops show up and we start talking to the cops. And, and I said, and the lady was standing right beside me. And I said, she can't. I mean, we're talking now, and she can't even hear me. And the guy was screaming at her, like, like to no end. I mean, this lady doesn't deserve any of that. There's no reason that he should have been doing any of this. It was a small incident. Probably could have walked away with no problems whatsoever. And it was just this huge thing that this guy just blew up about. And it was just an incident that I, I was so shocked that this guy came out of his car the way that he did and was screaming at this old lady. I mean, it was completely uncalled for, like... It, I, I was worked up the minute the guy like started. I was like, huh? Were you gonna rumble? No, I wasn't gonna rumble, but I was I was right up there because the guy. I mean, he's flown out of the shirt, dude. He's got yeah. capris on. He's yeah, the guy rumble. like they weren't capris. They were like cut off like sweatpants. Like it looked like he tried to make them shorts, but for some reason cut them too sh- long or something. <laughs> but like it was a weird situation for that. I think guy. it's it more just, of an Incredible Hulk situation. Like when he's not mad, those shorts. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the opposite of the grandma yeah. like the road to <laughs> so then when he gets angry like he was he was growing out of those shorts is what happened but i mean i mean the guy just the way that he's like you're going to jail and you too if you don't back away from me and the guy the other guy beside me that was came up and and he was like i ain't going to jail and it was funny because i went inside as i was waiting on the cops and and I, I told my mom and a couple other ladies, I said, if I wasn't such an honest guy, I'd tell those cops right now, I didn't see a car hit another car. You or, know? or you would, uh, I, that's that's probably what I was trying to think of. I'd be like, I need you for witnesses. I know, I can't wait to tell them that you hit that old lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I said, if I wasn't an honest guy, and I started telling my mom the situation, and there was another dude that was inside, and he goes, where's that guy at? I said, he's right out there. And he goes, he goes, if I walk out there, and he's still yelling at that old lady, I'm like, and he started cursing, explaining what he was going to basically beat the crap out of the dude. Like He was this, ready to rumble. Then. This guy was ready to rumble. He was mad. He was like, nobody's going to yell at like, an old lady like that. I'm and just like, thinking somebody has a mommy complex. I don't know, but his wife started yelling, and it was just this. And I was like, you guys bumped into each other. I mean, well, no, he well, was technically part. the old lady well, he was, Yeah, yeah, Maybe, yeah. Let's, it was let's her be fault. Honest. Let's be honest. Maybe it was she her shouldn't fault. be driving. Okay. In the first and, and I'll get it. I, I get it if she was... He's it, just an innocent victim in all this. If fight. it looked like, if it looked <laughs> like she you, was Doug. taking off, if it looked like she was taking off, but you could obviously tell that she was well from the setup, she was pulling up to get gas, you know, and it, it she wasn't accelerating or anything or it's taking off, and this guy just, I mean, instantly just screaming at this. So lady. when the cops got there, did they take her away in handcuffs? No. <laughs> was anybody taken away in handcuffs? They, they, the first thing they did, they, they came to us. It was kind of weird. They came to us because we were all standing around her car, and and I told them exactly what happened. I said, "This is what I saw. I saw her bump into him, and then, then by the time she got pulled up, you know, I was out of my car, and he's over there screaming at her. I told him to calm down. This other guy came over, told him to calm down. He wouldn't calm down. He starts yelling was at the us other about guy the gone situation. The cop no, him? he hung out because his wife was the one that oh. called the cops too. I'm just, I'm just one of these people involved 
has a warrant out for their arrest. This, <laughs> no, this is no. Muncie. Did, One of them has a warrant out for their didn't arrest. Didn't end up that way, but it was it was pretty insane. I mean, for for a situation to just happen at a rant, you know, happenstance like that. I mean, I don't know. I just I like the biggest the biggest complaint about being a costume vigilante is that you never catch crime when it happens. Yeah. That was your chance, Mike. Well, this dude, this that dude, was, you could have like, like constructed a cape and cow out Sarah, of your t-shirt. Sarah was about to clock him. Sarah, Sarah was right up there, man. She was, she was on top of that old lady protecting her and everything. So like a mama, like a mama bear. The with guy, a the guy was a goon, wasn't he? He was. Sarah says she says he was. Yeah, so Sarah was very worried about the old lady making it home. She she didn't look like she probably needed to be driving, but uh, it yeah, she had a few spots where Just she had hit some other time. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I felt I felt so sorry for her because I mean she seriously was just like. She got out of the car, and you could see it in her eyes. She just didn't know anything. She Maybe had no clue. Fly. And huh? she's like, I'm old. I can't hear. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she, uh, she actually, well, she did a damn good job of it. I'll tell you that, because everyone there felt sorry for her. I mean, every single person. I mean, Except one, for the guy. One of the, yeah, except, except for the guy and his wife. But, I mean, one of the workers uh, at the at the Speedway, they brought her out like a cup of water and everything, and she was sitting in the car, and... It was it was an incident, she man. She fooled you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she walked like she's talking about all my insurance claims. <laughs> I, yeah, I told him I pumped her gas and everything, and you know, but I just like it's just it's just crazy. People are so nuts, man. To to think that you know, just I it brought me back to a time when me and Sarah were talking about. We were in a car one time at at a Walgreens, and we backed up. And it just so happened this other guy was like, we were backing up to go out and this guy was backing up to go out a different direction and we caught bumpers. We were both backing up. We kind of, same speed, kind of just tapped each other. And Sarah's like, did you just hit somebody? I was like, I think I did. And 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 you could see, and, <laughs> then, you, and then you turn around and this guy and a lady in the car and like, you could see them kind of having the same conversation as we were like looking back like, oh wait, we did hit somebody. And the guy gets out of his car. I was like, oh, sorry, man. The guy's like, oh, sorry. You know, like I didn't even see it. I was like, I didn't even see you, you know, like, and so we pulled the cars away and I was like, oh, this is a little paint. And we both kind of rubbed it and you could tell there were no scratches. All it was was just this, this paint you know scuff on there and both of us are like sorry man you know i was like oh yeah and he was like do we need to do anything about this and i was like i i don't think so do you, do you think so and he was like no and he was like all right we're good you know it's not gonna cover no my 500 hundred dollar deductible i did have one time where a lady pulled out in front of me and knocked my bumper off of my car and she goes do we really need to get insurance involved <laughs> in this i'm like yes we do you pulled out in front of me uh so but yeah it was just People, I'm just shocked to, that people just blow up about the littlest thing like that. I mean, it seriously was this. I get it if it was a dent in his bumper or something like that. But I know, knowing the interaction I had with this dude, he's going to get the, the claim to it. It's going to turn into a situation where he'll probably get his whole bumper replaced. It'll be thousands of dollars worth of... Do you of, think he'll actually get the bumper replaced? No. <laughs> he'll yeah, the cash. There you go. That's a good Check. point. That's a good point. And he will jip this old lady. I mean... Um, what a jerk. And she'll probably you know, take the last of her social yep, security. Take the last, and the last points off her license. Yeah, uh, she. Yeah, that that was my fear. I was if, like, if it wasn't the be... yellow uh, safety yeah. barrier that she already scraped again. <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, that was funny. She did say that. And I was talking about the paint and stuff like that. And she was kind of sitting in the car. And she saw us pointing at it. And she goes, that was there from before. <laughs> <laughs> she said something about it. Like I was like, yes, we know. there was Because I saw it. I too. <laughs> Because I saw <laughs> I saw the yellow paint, and when I started looking around, I'm like, did she hit something else as she was trying to do this, this like, eight-point turn to turn around? Like, I thought maybe there was, a, a like, a pole, a yellow pole or something that she hit at one point, and there was nothing yellow around there. So she did that at some point somewhere else. But, I mean, that was a, I mean, it was a, a good, like, two-and-a-half beat by, like, three foot. Like, she scraped up against the pole. This, maybe... Maybe a uh, an eight inch like maybe spot six inches long of just white paint from his car that was on her car kind of thing. Sam, Mike, you're you're, you're sympathizing with the vic- you're sympathizing with the wrong. <laughs> That's what's wrong with this aggressive. country. Yes, she should have been. I like really Pontiac. 
I'm kind of curious on how I would have handled it if she would have got out of the car and been angry and he wouldn't have been mad. Like, I wonder if I would have handled it the same way. Probably not because I, I, I probably know been what like, would have happened if she would have hit your car. Oh, yeah. If she was still there. I know, but still, would you be like, we got to no, get there? No, no, with no. With the amount of damage that was there, at not very would you have any. Filed a claim? No. Would you have pumped her gas? Probably not. If she was uh-huh. distressed, I might have. But hypocrite. But she w- she wasn't distressed. <laughs> she wasn't distressed until the guy until the guy started screaming at her because she didn't even know what happened. You know. Uh, We're about in an hour, uh, and uh, it's been a good show. I've enjoyed all that we've talked about. Uh, but I did want to end this on 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 a different note here. Just if we could change abrupt gears here. Sure. Uh, uh, Mikey's birthday was last weekend. It was. And we had a pretty awesome little setup. Yeah, we did. And I have to say that uh, uh, Mike had a projector set out in his yard. It was a beautiful night for it once the rain passed through. Just a little. I mean, just it was a, a, a misting just a of rain for maybe 10 minutes. Uh, he had a beautiful screen set up, pulled it's top. still up there. <laughs> Is it really? I haven't taken it down yet. A uh, beautiful screen on the back of his garage, and it was nice. Did we ever measure? Probably. 103 inches is the screen size diagonally. And on a four by inch. on a four by eight sheet of plywood, a screen diagonal inch would be 103 inches. It was about that, so it was a nice size. Uh, he hooked up the sound through a nice sound system. Yeah, loud loud speakers. It was great. We had a good time. Had I was all. actually a little disappointed in the sound. I could have done better with a little bit more planning, but yeah. everyone else thought it was great. Uh, but me being the maker, now always picking apart the the problems, you know. Yeah. So, but Star Wars under the stars, man. Empire yeah. Strikes Back. Watch Empire Strikes That's Back. One. And I, I'll be honest, like that is not my favorite. I like Return uh, a lot. Return. I would have watched Return before I would have watched New Hope. Well, and then we were ready to watch New Hope at, at the house, so that's we was kind of we was hoping for New Hope, but uh, still up there, um, man. We can do it again. I I just we just had a really good. T- I had a really good time. My family all got tired. They whisked out. They went home. But so I sort of watched it by myself, and it's been a long time since honestly I've sat down and watched Empire by myself with all of you guys. But I mean, I was watching it <laughs> by myself, um, and uh, man, I know it's Star Wars, but that is a good movie. But the be- the best part the best part of the whole thing is um, one of our friend of ours' daughter. She she's what. How she just same age turned as Noah. seven. She, she just, just turned, turned seven. seven, and I'm guessing he has filled her mind with Star Wars yeah. information and um, stuff. Just might not click. Maybe she's never really sat down and watched Empire, and it got to the best part of the you know a good chunk of the movie where you know the fight and Obi Wan no, never, never told, told you told you what happened to your father. He made the statement, "I am your father," and she goes, "Wait." He's, he's his, his dad? dad like it clicked <laughs> it was the best moment because it, it was just one of those like you knew she never made the connection and then she was like oh crap like really like that's that's crazy it was just a it was a good said, moment to have she said oh my god yeah that's what she said <laughs> she that said, is dad <laughs> oh man it was it was it was worth the whole night that that <laughs> moment right there to hear her say that was just phenomenal i mean it, it was and the thing is, is 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 that's an event that i always thought that i would share with my child but there's so much out there with rebels and so much out there with sort of the prequels and so much out there with seven coming up that Noah was already aware of Oh, yeah. uh, of of who who Darth Vader was and his relationship to to Luke and everything long before, I mean he still hasn't watched Empire. We 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 we're trying to watch him sort of slowly in sequence. Um, we watched one, we watched two, we've watched three. They did not like three at all. They really like two. They they, and I'll be honest, like three has has still made my low spot, um, um, of all the movies because it is. It is hard to watch with a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. It's hard to watch, period. I mean, it's just, <laughs> there's just so much talking. But when we were preparing for the movie, uh, you I think you turned on a YouTube channel of just Star Wars Rebel like clips yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. I'm like, man, I really I didn't watch all the Clone Wars and like I, I and we, there were Clone Wars clips and Rebels clips and we were watching all these clips. And I was like, 
man, I need to watch these because these were all really good clips. I was like, this looks really good. And every time, I don't know if it's just I can't get through the first few episodes of both of those series kind of come off very kiddish and then they get better. But I just no, need to... No, no. Honestly, they, they maintain their kitty nature the yeah. entire time. Yeah, the thing is, is it's like... It's like yeah. It's the like same, same sort of Kitty Nature Ninja Turtles. You, you, you can't sit down with popcorn and watch it. You right. just, as long as you're in the room, yeah. you do yeah. your work or do your job or surf your Facebook or whatever it is you're doing, you can sort of follow along uh, the storyline. I compare it a lot to like uh, Naruto or something. Like, like, I, like I feel like I was never a big Airbender fan. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have watched Airbender. Nope. Uh, but, but I was never a real big Airbender fan, but I know that there was a, a, a large college age following for Airbender as well. And mm-hmm. I, 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 when I would watch it, I, to me, it's the same sort of, it's the same sort of poll. It's there's there's enough kitty stuff there that the kids stay interested and in sort of the, you know, it's not. I don't feel like it's directly intended for my our age group, right? But there's enough Star Wars still in it that it's decent. And, and like, like I said, I to me, it's a lot like the new Ninja Turtles. Uh, I love the new Ninja Turtles. I love the fact that uh, I think that's just sort of the direction the animation is right now. They take it a little more serious. It doesn't have to be the same story every time. It's not going to be five, you know, three teenagers and a dog <laughs> pull up to the same spooky house, find the same guy in a mask, and then repeat and and for the next episode. It's uh, four teenagers. I, I was trying to do my head in my. It's Fred and Shaggy. Velma. Uh, and Velma and Daphne. Okay, Daphne. yeah. Four. I was ca- I was counting Shaggy as more a dog. Scooby's not. Well, Scooby Scooby would probably be in, he'd probably be a middle aged yeah dog by the time maybe he's full grown yeah. You go dog years. I bet he's in his forties. Yeah, that's true. That's a podcast for a different. <laughs> <movie. laughs> but I mean, I just think you know. Um, uh, Dave Filoni does a good job with both those animated series, and I feel like he's had good stewardship over him. I think it was good, good call on Disney to keep invo- keep him involved with with Rebels, and and but you sort of have your own cast of characters. And I think I was talking to the, my my friend at work, the, Mr. Fram, Doug, uh, about it a little bit today. The one offs, you know, the one off yeah. episodes that are happening within the movies, and how before we've only ever basically been introduced to the star wars universe within one lineage the skywalker family and that's it like right like kathleen kennedy just came out about seven it, it's still going to contain and sort of the follow the scar the, the star the skywalker lineage so how that relates to the new new kids we don't know yet but we do know that it's following that 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 track with rebels it's not anakin I, I've more watched, it's Anakin, but it's a broader. I've watched universe. about four or five episodes of of Rebels, and I need to just keep watching it. I'd watch a lot more if somebody else would be interested in it, but nobody else in the house is interested. Are you yelling for your daughter or your wife? All of them. Oh, it's Jules, horrible, isn't it? Jules is always talking about. I want to watch that Star Trek, I'm like Star Wars. Come on. Well, then watch it, Mike. I. I'd love to. Just to what? My wife doesn't like Star Wars. No, oh, well, it's all, not not everybody's perfect. Mine doesn't either. It's weird. I I can't even. It's hard to fathom, isn't it? Yeah, actually, like, we don't agree on most movies. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. My wife and I are exactly. She seemed the like same she way. really liked Ant Man. Oh yeah, her they're sleeping through yeah. um, <laughs> almost all of it. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I are the same way. She has got a little bit more on board with the uh, with with the Marvel movies because she just likes Robert Downey Jr. a whole bunch. But my wife is probably I am not. I can't say on the, on the radio here, but maybe a decade and a half older than your wife, so maybe that's probably why. <laughs> maybe that's probably why Robert Downey Jr. has a little more appeal to her than maybe, maybe. She does, he does to your know. wife. But, uh, um, but like Lord of the Rings, never could get her to sit through them. Like yep. she she watched them all once, but it, like it never took. She just watched it to make you happy. No, no, she honestly because I've I've kind of done with lord of the rings I, I i that's not i can't revisit middle earth that way i just can't i just mm-hmm. i'll reread the books but i i can't rewatch the movies she's seen guardians of the galaxy a million times because i watch it like every other day oh so in bits and pieces yeah. like, she's like oh, i walks in and it's like oh you're watching this again oh, i've seen this part huh? <laughs> so, i've been watching right. the first avengers a lot because it's been on fx so if i'm not doing anything i just flip on tv and I'm like, if you're oh, not look, doing avengers. anything watch rebels yeah i'm doing other stuff and i feel i don't I, I feel compelled to sit down and watch it like i don't know why like i feel like i have to do that yeah well you can if you i mean whatever i don't care we'll do whatever you want it's a free country <laughs> do whatever you want do it yeah <clears throat> but wife issues 
the same. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Not everybody can be as lucky as Mikey. Who, I know. Whose wife wants to curl up and watch stuff with him that he wants to watch. And uh, Did you just not hear me yell that? Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. There's one thing on the planet. Courtney likes a lot of stuff more than we do. Did yeah, but Doug, do. Doug's the, the, the pissy spouse in that relationship. That's true. <laughs> Doug's the like, if it ain't Coach, I ain't watching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they took Coach off Netflix. I got to really? get the DVDs. Huh? I've been buying really? the... I was, I was it just pretty left. pissed off. I was, I was like just, you know, right. almost into season four. So, what? What? No, nothing. I just, I was okay. I was just letting Mike know that we're an hour and fifteen minutes. If I love, know. I love how I've had to sit here and listen to Jury Duty, this an old woman, is Bobcast. and I speak for five, five seconds, and I'm like, well, we're at an hour and fifteen. So, why are we talking about Doug? You've Good been, night, everybody. You, you've been bumped, Doug. What do you, <laughs> what do you want to talk about, Doug? Good night. Really? That's it. Nothing at all. Buffalobrotherhood.com. Buffalobrotherhood.com. <laughs> okay, I, I was like, yes. that's good enough for me. I'm right. giving you a chance to, to kill did you, it. Did you want me to go through the whole thing? You can. I would prefer if you told everybody where they can find everything. Jake, let me ask you. You're sort of a. You're the young guy at the table. You know, you're more hip to social media. Than, than, than maybe maybe the rest of us are. You know, it's your your line of work. Buffalo Don't you think we should move this stuff to the beginning of the show, or should we always just have it right there at the end? Um, probably both, yes. actually. We should be hitting it earlier, yeah. shouldn't we? Both at the beginning and the end. Constantly. That's kind of what I was thinking. Because here's my thing. I watch it in parts throughout the day. Because usually I'll watch, and then like, I'll stop and go to a meeting. So I might forget the first part, and I start again. Well, forget. Really, the show should just be broadcast at your place of employment. Over, you just had loudspeakers and just. R- re- really? Yeah. Well, I don't. Buffalo we should just get you guys a house down there, and you guys always hang yeah. out. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, I can do it now. Yeah, Doug's yeah. unemployed, so. Here we go. Not under. No, I don't mean unemployed. Doug is pursuing other options. Is that yeah. better? There you go. We think he has a plan. He's just not telling us what it <laughs> yeah. is. We're fairly yeah, sorry. We're fairly what? soon. Retiring? <laughs> yeah. Don't retire. That's why we've been playing so much golf recently. <laughs> he's getting his, uh, getting his game uh, up. He's going for the senior tour. There you go. <laughs> if you think Doug should retire, you can let us know at facebook.com slash buffalo brotherhood. Huh. If you want to email us, you can at buffalo brotherhood at gmail.com. If you want to follow us on face yes. on Twitter, yes. sorry, I already said Facebook, Twitter, you can do so at Bobcast Nation. You can follow me at Buffalo Cash. You can follow Mikey at fuman 220s Two ins in the number two. Good job. You can follow Douglas at Refried Evil, and you can follow Jake as at the Bearded Jake. Man, You're some on nights I'm on. I feel pretty good. Uh, See you next week. Come back next week when we still don't know what we're going to talk about. But I can tell you what, we're going to give all that information at the beginning of the show as well as at the end of the show. Have a fantastic week, everybody, and we're signing out from the lodge. Goodbye.